Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jeff. Today I'm making this video to talk about something that I seen on that I saw online that yet again brought about some frustration for me because I've discovered one of the underlying issues that appears to keep coming up in in our country or in our society in particular is fanaticism. Fanaticism for um, religion. It could be fanaticism for global warming, for animal rights activists, in this case that's what that is, for political dogma, for any sort of, it could be for a football team, but fanaticism creates a divide among people. So you have, it, it, when, you're, when you become a fanatic, you have to have an opposing side. And if you become fanatic enough about it, it's your side is always right. My football team is always the best. My basketball team is always the best. My my political beliefs are always the, the right one. My religious beliefs are the only way to the truth. My um, theory on global warming is the only one that counts. And so people have lost focus on the core of it all, which is rational discussion that leads to intelligent debate that kind of has compromise from both sides that allows us to meet in the middle in the most democratic way, right? That's basically democracy. I mean, it's your vote counts. It's not just, hey, the right wing wants this or the left wing wants this. So there's a democracy. So fanaticism creates a one side knows better than the other or one side's better than the other. And in this particular case, yeah, this video is about fanatics, but I just wanted to talk about the animal rights activists and how fanatical and bullying they've become. As I'm online, I'm, I'm watching this really cute video. I call it cute. You guys can argue with me and tell me I'm a bad guy, but it was a, it was a cute video. Let me see if I can find it. Um, let me just pull this up. I apologize for not already having it up. But it was um, dolphins and squirrels. And I want you guys to watch this. So yeah, all, my pro profile is just loaded with people in their um, dogmatic positions. <laughs> I better spell squirrels, right? Okay. All right, so there's this. So if we just take a look at this, it's a pretty cute video, right? I mean, when I look at it, I'm like, look at how cool these dolphins look. I swear I'm a dolphin, look at their smiling. They're having fun. These squirrels are like, look at these guys. Everyone's like, kind of like inquisitive. It's a cool video. Yeah, sure, I'm like, well, these dolphins are in a tank. I don't know where this is filmed at originally when I'm watching it. But then I come over into the comments. And all I see is demonization of everyone. Five, five dolphins in a small pool. This is beyond sad. Oh, my God, what a disturbing show of... Animal abuse, need to shut it down. Um, looks like six to seven maybe dolphins in a small tank. Disgusting. They are saying, let me out. We would love to put these humans in a room. I mean, we're talking about extreme, extreme, like, hate of human beings and, like, only animals that they love. Now, initially, I, I am like, wow, these people are really serious. I mean, they're to the point where they're going to basically... <laughs> I mean, they're going all in on people, right? And so, so, or basically the page that created it and the SeaWorld, that's actually SeaWorld. That is actually called SeaWorld Cares. The people who, who are posting, they don't know that, the, uh, that that's actually SeaWorld Cares. What SeaWorld Cares is, is a, um, rehabilitation for animals who have been, um, you know, discovered stranded on the beach or injured by, injured or some way unable to go back out into the, uh, the wildlife. Okay. So that's a big deal, right? I mean, you know, but these people, they don't know that all they see is dolphins in tank. They assume the worst and they all of a sudden start saying they want to put the owners of the aquarium, SeaWorld in the tanks and see how they like being in captivity. Okay. So, you know, so the, the next thing that I want to do is say, well, Okay, where does all this this sentiment come from where you have a bunch of uh, activists basically 
you know, so angry. And it, 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 a lot of it stems from this place called Taji, T-A-I-J-I, okay? So there's this, it's a bay, cove in uh, Japan where Japanese fishermen for hundreds of years have caught dolphins uh, and other whales and, you know, for meat and for um, aquariums. Okay, so we're coming into an era now where it's not acceptable to capture wild dolphins and bring them into exhibits. Um, okay, so, yes, in a, in a rational way, we can agree that it is no longer acceptable to capture wild dolphins, orcas, and put them into captivity because we now know that um, it's not great. Okay, so let's just agree to that. But what are we going to do about the dolphins that are already in captivity? So we're going to stop capturing these wild animals, and we're going to educate people on why we should not do this. But there's still going to be animals that need to be taken care of that are in captivity that cannot go back into the water. Okay, so there's this guy. His name is Rick O'Berry. This guy is a genius. I say he's a genius because he knows how to pluck people's heartstrings like the best of them. What he does, so for example, I'm, I'm re I've watched some of his documentaries. So he gets paid millions upon millions of dollars in crowdsource funding where people donate to his cause. And if you just look at his post, so he's got a bunch of people all riled up here. Th these people right here, they're, they're just, they're, they're all buying what Rick O'Berry's selling. Rick is just, selling them everything they need to hear to be like, shut down the tanks, empty the tanks. Okay, so these people, I mean, if you read their comments, they keep a constant state of hungry, my heart aches for them, they should be free in the ocean. Okay, that's that's not too much hate. But how do you advocate love with so much hate? If you read these, if you read these um, comments, I mean, there's so much anger in them, but they claim to be these loving human beings who are compassionate, and they hate these Japanese people who who catch these. And if you watch a documentary, it's actually called Exposing the Cove. The, so the Cove was created to create this big awareness about how dolphins are being put into captivity. And basically, the Japanese people in the area who've been doing this for hundreds of years, whaling is an industry that's existed for many years. It doesn't mean that it has to continue to exist in the same capacity that it did. But yes, they do eat whale meat, okay? Japanese eat fish, sushi, all that stuff, ahi tuna. But the thing is, no one's advocating for the ahi. No one's advocating for the shellfish. No one's advocating for the crabs. They're only advocating for the dolphins because the dolphins are cute. So to these people, the dolphins and the whales have, have a special place in people's hearts that the ahi tuna and the mahi-mahi do not. Okay, so when they're out eating sushi... And at the same time, eating sushi, they're texting on their cell phone how much they hate the Japanese people for um, Taji because they watch Rick O'Berry's uh, documentary. Now, if they went to the they went to Taji to talk to the Japanese people, and they're they're basically being bombarded by Westerners who are coming in, like basically going, "You guys are terrible people. You guys are terrible." You know, basically like wanting to fight um, very combatively, not in a peaceful way. This is not peaceful protest most of the time. This is very aggressive and angry, hateful attacks on Japanese fishermen. We're talking people who are like 80 years old getting attacked by Westerners who are coming into their village because they watch Rick O'Berry's um, documentary. Now, I know some of you are being like, yeah, so what, you support um, uh, the killing of dolphins and this and that? No, I don't. I'm saying that what I'm looking at is the amount of hate while they're, while they're pretending to love. And I'm saying that this is this is a hypocrisy, and it's terrible, and it and it and it's not it's not producing any positive results. And I and I'll show show you what I mean by this. So there's a so there was a lady. So she, she commented that you know that dolphins should not be in captivity. She went so far as to like bash the brand and do everything that she could to basically demonize anyone who does it. And I, and I look at her profile and I see two dogs here that don't look too happy. They look tired and they're in captivity. So while she's over here bashing the captive, captive dolphins here, these wild animals, she's got two an animals that are just so bored out of their mind in captivity. Because what else is that? That's captivity. She might love her dogs, but that doesn't mean that they're not in captivity. So I, I got to thinking, I was like, she's really talking to herself. While she's bashing all these people who have animals in captivity, 
she's really talking to herself as she's observed in her subconscious that she has got her animals in, in captivity. Her dogs, her cats, birds, whatever they may be, fish, it does not matter. The point is, is that if she, even if she hasn't fully recognized in her subconscious that she's um, guilty of what she's accusing others of, she's still hip, hypocritical if she doesn't, she might not even know it. And that was what I, that was what really got my attention. I'm like, because then I started going through more and more of them, and I started to see that a lot of these animal activists have dogs. And if I, if I, when I, what I know about most dog owners, and I've gone to their houses, I've been a dog owner myself, I had my dog in my backyard when I was at work, or sometimes in my house, and I've had cats. And they were basically captive. They were not free, feral, wandering around in the woods. They were not um, wild, free-range animals. Okay, so... I, I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, they might have a point. Rick O'Berry might have a point, and it might be worth exploring, and it might be worth pointing out to the Japanese. But going into Japan and demonizing a bunch of Japanese fishermen, 80, 80 years old, 90 years old, who have been doing this, who are healthier than any 45-year-old I've ever seen. I mean, I'm talking like very healthy people. Like, you could tell a man, you could tell a fruit by its, you know, good fruit, you know, a bad tree doesn't produce bad, or good fruit, right? A good tree doesn't produce bad fruit. So, I mean, they're obviously not living that out of harmony, you know? I mean, sure, Japan's had a share of natural disasters, but by and large, these are people who've lived a lot longer than many of these people will ever live. So they're not doing too many things that are out of harmony. You know, some of them are even in their hundreds. Yes, they're fishermen. They've, they've captured beautiful dolphins, slaughtered them for meat sad. Okay, to some people that's very sad. But yet again, they don't care about the ahi tuna because they just don't have this love affair with an ahi that they have with a dolphin or a whale. So the point is, is that um, if we look at Rico Berry, what we then discover is in these links here, okay, you have his business model. So he's very, he's a genius because he's discovered a business model here where all he has to do is create compelling footage and compelling video that tells a story that gets your attention, and then he tells you to click on it, and if you click on it, you'll end up, uh, let's see here. All right, I did click on it, by the way. If you click on it right here, first thing I see, this points out, this is in red, donate, take action now. You don't, you don't like what you see on Blackfish. You don't like what you see on um, Taji, all these films that I've created. You know I'm out here fighting the good fight. Go ahead and donate to me. Now, what, what happens is he makes millions and millions and millions of dollars to continue to find an enemy. That's basically what he's doing. He's fighting an enemy that he has created. So... So now you have Japanese people who are like, who are these Western people that, that go around wa waving their finger in every culture's face but their own? They So it's like that saying, you know, um, forgive someone their sins against you so that, you know, you can be forgiven your sins. Westerners, Americans, people, we're not perfect. What good are we doing when we're going into these foreign lands telling them, you know, how to be? Sure, you can educate them in a kind-hearted way. I would advocate for that. That would be a good thing, right? It's like, uh, you know, old men shouldn't be marrying 12-year-olds, okay? That's a cultural indifference. In one society, it's considered a good, it's considered allowed in maybe like Lebanon or something. And here, you know, 18 is the age of consent. But, you know, you, you can't go in there demonizing them and expect them to change. You have to understand them to educate them or, we're, we're, like, why are we even on a soapbox? Who are we to educate, really? I mean, I'm not advocating for any of this. I'm just saying that this whole finger-waving thing is creating enemies. Like, they're looking at us like, who are these Westerners coming over here telling us that we can't do this, which we've been doing for hundreds of years in our culture? That's If you watch these symposiums that the Japanese have in Taji and other towns, they're basically like, they're like, all we see is a money-making machine. They, they, this is what opened my eyes to the fact that all Rick O'Berry is is a money-making machine who's demonizing um, people who, who do this. Norway does it, uh, other people. So 
you know, he's basically got a business model that preys on people's emotions, people who on Saturday, Friday night, and Saturday night, Tuesday night, whatever, tune into Netflix. They got nothing better to do than watch Blackfish, got The Cove, and they watch it. They eat popcorn, drink soda, get out the Kleenex, start watching all these uh, stories that Rick O'Bear is telling, and then all of a sudden it becomes gospel truth, and it's the only truth. And anyone who's ever gone to SeaWorld, anyone who goes to zoos, is bad. Right? Empty the tanks. Meanwhile, they're forgetting that they've also gone to SeaWorld, they've also gone to zoos, they've also got dogs and cats in captivity in their own homes. But yet, they're combatively and aggressively attacking other people. Like, using words like evil, I hope that they rot in hell, this and that. Really? Come on, guys. Am I the only one who's, like, seeing the hypocrisy and, like, saying, like, enough is enough with fanaticism, like... Surely there must be someone else who's, who's, who's going to see that, yes, I, like I said, I'm compassionate towards animals. I don't believe in animal, animal abuse as much as the next person. Really, I don't. I mean, I'm just saying that I'm also calling BS and, and hypocrisy when I see it. I'm not going to just turn a blind eye to certain things because of whatever reason. Anyways, guys, share your thoughts on the animal rights activists, and, and I'd like to hear from you guys because I'm confused. <laughs> As to whether or not this should be allowed. I mean, this kind of abuse where, where these foreigners are making millions of dollars off of going in there to demonize other people in the name of advocacy and, and um, animal rights, yet profit millions and millions of dollars. Sure, I'm sure this Rick Oakberry guy might be a very nice guy, but he obviously discovered a rat and he's exploiting it at the expense of honest, hardworking Japanese fishermen and Norwegian fishermen and all that. And, you know... That those animals in that, the animals in captivity in the tanks, you know, I've, I've been around wild, or wild dolphins and I've been around, um, captive dolphins and I've looked at captive dolphins. Sure, maybe if I saw one that was depressed, I would say that's very sad. That animal looks depressed, but no different than the dog when I walk into someone's house and I see a depressed dog. Like the lady who's got the two dogs sleeping on the couch that honestly, in my opinion, they look miserable in her captivity. But she's going around judging everybody else. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that she should be uh, held accountable or, or put on trial for having uh, her sad dogs in captivity or anyone else just like her. But I'm saying, like, maybe she can tone it back a little bit and realize she's not free of sin, so to speak. You know, she it's not like she's just some patron saint who's doing everything by the book. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Anyways, guys, talk to you later.